What's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, Sean Clarita formally announces that his new coach will be Stefan, boss of Outlaw, who we've talked about quite a bit this year. So moving on from Matt Jansen and now formally announcing on his Instagram that he will be working with Stefan going forward. Now, Stefan had announced this, I believe, yesterday or the day before on a German YouTube video. But today was the first acknowledgement directly from Sean that that is going to be his new coach. So Stefan has had a hell of a 2024, and now he's picking up some major clients like Sean Clarita. It seems like he's gearing up, pun intended, for a hell of a 2025. And as you guys know, Sean has also confirmed that he will be competing in less than three weeks at the EVLS Prague Pro, which is going to be something that we talk a lot about in this video, especially there's some more stuff I want to talk about with Chris Bumstead, who's doing the show. And while I think that Sean will probably be towards the top of this lineup, you know, granted, we don't know who all is doing this show aside from the four big names now that we know are doing it, and that's something that we're going to talk about in a second. But generally, these international shows, like Prague, for example, tend to have a pretty decent roster of international bodybuilders that might not be on the same level as an Olympian like Martin Fitzwater, or even a Mr. Olympia in classic physique like Chris Bumstead, or even a Mr. Olympia in 212 like Sean Clarita. So there's probably going to be about a dozen or so guys that are kind of not on the level of some of these names that we talk about. So Sean Clarita will probably place towards the top, but I don't see him beating Martin. I frankly don't see him beating Chris. I think that he certainly looks to have lost some size based on what we saw at this year's Olympia. And I think we also pointed out that his symmetry was off. One of his legs was bigger than the other. One was like noticeably smaller. And you could kind of see the same thing in his arms as well. And I think his chest, which was also, you know, previously a weak point for Sean, looked downsized and smaller at the Olympia. Albeit, we know that this was intentional now for Sean to come in a little bit lighter to try to be more shredded, but it didn't work out in his favor. And I think going up against guys like Martin, Martin, who not the biggest guy, but really full, really 3D, um, Chris Bumstead, it's, it's going to be a challenge for a guy like Sean to really do some damage here. Now, another relatively big name that confirmed they are competing in the Prague show is Brazilian bodybuilder Horse MD. Now, according to Brazilian outlets, Horse will be competing in all three of the remaining open bodybuilding shows for this year, including Romania, Prague, and the Big Man Weekend, which is the very beginning of December. Now, this is interesting for a number of reasons. I think Obviously, it's going to add another interesting dynamic, another decent pro in open that Chris Bumstead will have to contend with. And again, who knows who else will add their name to this list in Prague. Because in my opinion, this is a huge opportunity. I really feel this will probably be one of the most viewed, most talked about, and most watched open bodybuilding shows of the year, with the exception of, of course, the Arnold and the Olympia. Because Chris Bumstead is in this lineup, and considering the fact that we're just two weeks after the Olympia, Chris hasn't really had any significant amount of time to really do anything as far as transitioning to open bodybuilding. So there is an opportunity here not knowing how Chris will do an open for maybe a smaller name to come in here and be compared favorably with Chris or even potentially beat Chris. So I expect we're going to see some curveballs and maybe some guys jump in this lineup that we weren't expecting to see here because it is an opportunity. There's going to be a lot of eyeballs on this show, um, and this could be a chance for an open pro to make a name for himself. But the other reason is I've seen a lot of speculation on Brazilian outlets that Ramon Dino might also jump in this show in the open bodybuilding category to have one last battle with Chris Bumstead and see who places better in open. Now, this is an incredibly compelling storyline and a incredibly compelling speculation because I'm seeing it a lot on the Brazilian pages. Like I said, I don't know if they know something that we don't. And we do know that Ramon was a guy that was exceedingly heavier than his weight cap and classic physique 
during his entire off season, then even weeks out from the show, he's a big guy and he walks around a lot heavier than he competes at. So theoretically making the jump to open wouldn't be super difficult because Ramon's already much bigger than a classic guy typically is throughout the year. But the other reason, like I mentioned a couple of videos ago is Ramon reposted something on his story and it was essentially a post about Chris doing prog and it said it would be even better if Raphael Brandau, Horse MD and Ramon Dino jumped into this lineup as well. And Ramon reposted that. Now, the interesting thing now is these guys are all friends, Raphael, Horse, and Ramon. They're all Brazilian bodybuilders. And now Horse has said he is doing it. And while Raphael hasn't formally announced it yet, I also have a strong feeling that we'll see Raphael in this lineup. And I know that Horse and Ramon are particularly close. So just the fact that Horse MD, Marcelo De Angelis, will be there and that Ramon reposted this, I think there is a chance even though at this point it's pure speculation. The, but like I said, the fact that so many of these Brazilian pages have been speculating about Ramon doing this show makes me feel like there's something they know that we don't. I try to stay pretty tapped into these Brazilian pages just because a lot of their guys are kind of superstars right now. But I, I think sometimes something gets lost in the translation and they know more about these guys and they, they know them more intimately than we do. So... All this speculation about Ramon, I think, is very, very interesting. And I don't think it's out of the question. But let's talk about Chris for a second here. So this is the latest update that we've seen from Chris. It's a video of him training, doing some curls. Looking pretty big and pretty full here. And as I mentioned earlier, I think it's worth pointing out that we're only a couple weeks now post-Olympia. Chris just competed and won his classic physique Olympia title just weeks ago. So really there's been no time for him to make any preparation for transitioning into open as far as putting on size or really anything other than probably just coming in heavier than he comes in for classic physique because he's not doing a last minute cut for the weigh in the day before. So with that being said, I think the bar for Chris is set really low here. And I think that's also why Chris said he's doing this just for fun, to give the people what they want. I think he wants the expectations to be low. And I think they are and they should be. You know, I've watched a few different takes on this, a few different videos about Chris doing this show. And some people really love it. They think it's really exciting. I'm in that camp. I think this is a good move. I think it's what the fans want to see. And some people think this could be a mistake for Chris. Like this could be a blemish on his career if he doesn't do well here. I don't think that. I don't think it matters if Chris doesn't win this show. Like I said, I think the expectations are really low. I think most bodybuilding fans understand that he's, he's just two weeks out of competing in classic physique. This isn't going to be a fully fledged transition of Chris going into open. This is going to be a Chris that just competed in Classic, maybe coming in a little bit bigger and fuller to do an open show. But he hasn't had time to really add significant muscle, make any significant changes, put on significant stage weight. None of that has happened. It's been two weeks. So do I think this could be a blemish on his career if he doesn't win? I honestly don't. I don't think it matters. I think people will just really enjoy this. They want to see how he's going to do. And really, I think the expectation should be low. Like I said, I mean, what do you expect? This isn't a Chris that had a full year to make this transition. But the other side of that coin is how impressive it would be if Chris does manage to win this show. Because of the same reason that I think the expectation should be low, he's had no time to really prepare for this as far as making a full transition into open. So if Chris were to win this show with just classic physique size, like I said, it's only been two weeks, that would be incredibly impressive. And I think when you consider the fact that you've got Martin Fitzwater in this show, a top four Olympian, and let's not even think about if you know, Raphael or Ramon does this show. Let's not even think about even Sean Clarita. 
if you just look at the fact that you've got a top four men's open bodybuilding Olympian in this lineup, if Chris managed to win this show without really having time to do anything to prepare for the switch to open, and he beat a top four open Olympian right off the bat, I think there genuinely needs to be some consideration, and I'm sure he probably will consider it, of doing next year's Olympia in open bodybuilding. Because like I said, I think it is honestly kind of unlikely that Chris would beat Martin, a top four open Olympian, without having the time to really make that switch. So if he did, and then he had an entire year to actually prepare and transition into open, you like he could theoretically be top three or win the Open Olympia if he's able to beat Martin. But like I said, I do think that's unlikely. But that's what's exciting about this competition is we don't know what Chris's physique would look like next to an open bodybuilder. That's the excitement of this. We can look at all the pictures we want and compare the Olympia videos and stuff all we want. But the fact is we haven't seen it on stage, Chris posing in a competition against an open guy. And we're going to see that for the first time in Chris's Olympia reign here in Prague. So I don't think this will be a mistake for Chris, honestly, no matter where he places. I guess maybe with the exception of him placing dead last, which I don't think that's going to happen. And frankly, if Chris is even in the mix here at all, if he's in the first call out, it's a win for Chris. And then especially if you consider the possibility that we might see Raphael Brand out here. We got Horse MD. We might see Ramon. We got Sean Clarita. Maybe Akeem Williams does this one too. So you could have a handful of guys that placed in the top 10 at the Open Olympia. You could have a former 212 Mr. Olympia champ. For Chris to even be in the first call out with those guys after not having time to prepare for a switch to Open... In my opinion, that would be a win for Chris. And I think in a sense he might even be downplaying his own ability here by saying this is just for fun, he just wants to scratch this itch, just to kind of, you know, like I said, kind of temper people's expectations because it is unrealistic that he would win a show with top Olympians in it right off the bat with no time to prepare. But I've got to think that if he won this show, he would recognize how impressive that really is And that would immediately put him in position to be a top three or four guy at the Open Olympia next year with no additional preparation. But he would have the whole year to prepare if he decided to do that. So honestly, I'm not going into this competition with the expectation that Chris is going to win. I think Martin is a ferocious competitor. He's extremely impressive. And I think he's going to be very difficult for Chris to beat. But... If Chris does beat him, it's the story of the year. And I think if Chris beats him, him and Hani need to have a serious conversation about maybe one last prep together, even if it's not in classic physique, but just one attempt at the Open Olympia. Because I, I think if he beats a top four guy, it it's wildly impressive. And you never know what could happen. I mean, we've seen Derek Lunsford with very short notice transition to open do the open olympia and get top two right out of the gate and you got to give chris his credit because Derek only won the 212 olympia one time chris is coming into this open show off of six classic physique olympia wins and he's got a bigger starting point than Derek. i would imagine he's probably 30 or so pounds heavier than Derek was when Derek stepped off the 212 olympia stage and decided to go into open And granted, there's a pretty significant height difference there, but still, he's got five more Olympia titles than Derek, and he's got a heavier starting point. Maybe it's not that unrealistic that he could win this show. Now, the final story that I've got for you guys today, I I haven't seen too many people talking about this, but Charles Griffin, I saw kind of quietly announced that he's going to be retiring from bodybuilding last night, but after this year, he says one more year, One last round, one last dance. He wants to be a four-time Olympian. And he says, let's go out with a bang next year. 
And I think this is a big deal because Charles is a fantastic bodybuilder. I always enjoy seeing him compete. And last year at the 2023 Mr. Olympia, he was top 10. So I'm kind of sad to see him go, but I wanted to include that in this video because he kind of soft launched his retirement announcement. I didn't really see anybody pick it up or talk about it. So uh, shout out to Charles Griffin, one last ride in 2025. I'm trying to get to the Olympia and do the Olympia one last time. So shout out to Charles. But that's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. Make sure you like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Click that bell notification icon if you have not already. And as always, I love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out. All right, guys. Don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power. My Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power. My secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, give that one a look. And all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day.